Welcome back to Refit and Sail. In this episode, we're going to do some stuff with electricery. Hello, I'm George and I'm on my boat Liberta here in the Tamar, uh, just up from Plymouth. As you may have seen in my previous episode where we sailed back from the Azores up to Plymouth, uh, we had some engine issues and it was largely down to the engine not wanting to start on the engine start battery. Having checked the battery out, uh, I put a, a battery tester on it, it appears to be absolutely okay. So the next thing that I think is the likely culprit is the battery switch. Battery switches do sometimes have issues in that their contacts internally can corrode or get crudded up. So um, the plan is to replace that battery switch. I've just had a new one delivered, but while I'm at it, I'm also going to replace the battery cables and the battery clamps because the clamps are also pretty past their best. So that's what I'm going to do next. Follow me downstairs and we'll get started. So here's the engine start battery. I've just had to remove my second fridge to get down into there. Uh, the cables don't look too bad, but the battery um, clamps are a bit uh, past their best. I had to take the cables off these studs, which are normally what are used for the battery cables, because when I tried to do them up, the threads on them were just, uh, well, knackered. And um, in fact, on the uh, red positive side, when I did it up, the stud snapped off and you could see where the stud had been degrading. So it's possible that there was a bit of resistance in there. So I'm going to stick new clamps on the battery. I'm going to make up a new cable just to go on here because this is really inflexible, horrible cable that someone's used on it. So um, again, I don't know how good that is. Fortunately, someone has fitted a fuse in here in the past, which is good. Um, I've got a brand new fuse to go in there just because I want to inspect this one. If the um, if there's any corrosion on the terminals, I might as well just stick another one in. Uh, and then we go on to the selector switch. I have a very simple system. I didn't install this, but I've installed similar systems on customers' boats. So there are three switches, one for the engine start battery on the left, one for the services battery on the right, and then a linking uh, switch at the top. So what I was able to do when the engine wouldn't start on the engine start battery was to use the third key just to link the two battery banks together and then I could start the engine using the domestic bank or the services as it's been labelled here. That made me think that there was something wrong with the engine start battery, it being flat or, or, or some other issue, um, but the voltages weren't dropping on the engine start battery when recorded uh, with a multimeter on the battery itself. So um, that suggested that there was something else amiss. And uh, having got back here, I've found the battery's fine and there's something wrong with the cabling. So this switch here, I think, has some burnt or damaged contacts in it, which are giving high resistance. So the plan is to swap that out along with the cables because I can do the whole lot in one go. Uh, and then hopefully that will solve my problem. So that's two of my three domestic uh, bank batteries. They're lithiums. Uh, apologies for the mess of the cabling. Uh, and then at the back here, you can see here's the uh, back end of those three switches. So I'm just going to be swapping out this one that's down here. To do so, I'm probably going to have to take this battery out and, uh, and then swap them over and put it all back together again. I've just removed the first bit of uh, battery cable. So this goes from the battery terminal, which uh, I've just replaced with a new one, uh, to the fuse for that battery. And I've already discovered that it isn't ideally made this. First of all, it's really, really um, stiff uh, cable, unlike the new stuff, which is lovely and floppy because it's much, much smaller stranded. Uh, this has got very thick strands which you probably can't see. The other thing is uh, someone's crimped on the wrong size um, end fittings so it really wants uh, eight mil um, fittings and this has got tens or possibly even twelves on that end so it was quite a loose fit on the fuse holder. In itself it's not a major major issue uh, but I think if you're going to be making things up then it's good to have exactly the right size fittings on the end of your cables. So First job is to cut up the appropriate size bit of uh, cable. I'm upgrading slightly from 25 mil, I assume it feels like 25 millimeter cross section cable to 35 mil. I'm gonna tell you what that is in AWG, if I can find it stamped on here. I should know off the top of my head, but um, I uh, 
I haven't been doing any electrical stuff for a year because I've been on holiday. So the way I normally do this is I make up one end first and then I can put that on whichever terminal it needs to go on and then I can run the cable around to where it needs to be and get exactly the right length for chopping it off and making up the other end. So uh, to make sure I cut back the right amount of sheath I get my terminal and I'm just going to hold it against my thumb there so I need to cut back around about that much. I run around it very carefully with a sharp blade. I don't actually saw, I literally just press the blade into the plastic. I have to look up occasionally just to check that you can see what I'm doing. And then you can normally just wiggle it off if you've done it in a straight line, which I haven't because I looked up whilst I was doing it. So if I concentrate actually what I'm doing, whilst holding it up. There we go, you can see that now. I can uh, now just pull that end off, cover up a sharp knife. Ooh. I normally give them just enough of a twist that when I poke it in the end of the crimp fitting, and because these are the correct size crimp fittings for the cable, it's a nice snug fit. I can push that all the way down so that is exactly the right length and then I can crimp it. Now hydraulic crimpers are better but I don't have my hydraulic crimper on the boat so I've got a manual crimper here uh, which is the one that I keep and at the end here you can press a little button in and then you can select different size um, dies for crimping different size cable lugs. So I need to select 35 uh, that's 50, uh, 6, 10, that's 35 on that side, and 15, 25, 35 on that side, and now that is the correct size die for crimping up my battery cables. I think you could just about see that, there we go. So what I do is I'll do it one way, do it another way, move it along a little bit because I like to crimp all the way down the, um, the eye. <sighs> Takes a little bit of effort to push the um, crimper open and closed but it's quite a nice foolproof way of crimping your battery connectors. I see some people kind of bodging it by doing crimps in vices and all sorts of things like that. Um, that's really not ideal because these things are made to be exactly the right size to crimp the appropriate size cable. So um, 35mm cable, 35mm die, 35mm uh, crimp connector with an 8mm hole and that's it all done. The only thing I now need to do on here just to um, make sure it stays as waterproof as possible is use a little bit of heat shrink. I've got black. You can buy yellow, red, all sorts of different colours. Got to be honest, I do tend to use black for everything. It'd be nice to do the red ones in red and the black ones in black but it just means you've got to carry an awful lot more stuff. So a little bit of uh, black heat shrink. I'm going to put it on the other end of the cable. Slide it all the way down. Slide it over the crimp. And then use a heat gun, or in my case I've got a little uh, gas torch which I carry. Unfortunately the striker's broken on it so I'll just have to do that. Switch it on and then I can shrink my bit of heat shrink onto the cable without burning it. I'm always quite gentle. If it takes a couple of seconds longer it's not a problem. It's better than burning something. There, that's the first crimp done. And that is ready now to stick on so I can work out how long the cable needs to be. 
Right, so I know how long that wants to be. I've just uh, made it slightly longer than it needs to be. I'd rather it was slightly too long than slightly too short, because that's just a waste of cable. So I'll chop this off with some far fairly um, sharp snips. Goes through it like butter, and then I can make up the other end. But the thing, the thing, the thing to remember is to put your heat shrink on first, because sometimes if you're using heat shrink, which is only just big enough, which I like to use, you can't get it on the end once it's um, crimped on. So you put it on the cable and then you can slide it back over the connector. Now, what you can do is if you want the end in a certain orientation, uh, you can obviously at this stage turn it to where you roughly want it. So that needs to go on top of the battery like that. That probably wants to go roughly in that orientation. So they're kind of at 90 degrees to each other almost. Give that a good shove on. There. First cable done. Easy peasy. So the other thing that's probably worth mentioning uh, that I'm going to do is when I stick this on the battery terminal and this onto the fuse, I'm just going to give it a very light coating of Vaseline, which also helps keep moisture out of all the connections. There are proprietary um, products you can buy, you can even just use regular old grease, but uh, Vaseline has been used for donkey's years by car manufacturers um, and uh, on boats and it works very well. Here's the first cable back in place, so nicely Vaselined underneath all these connections. Another thing I've just noticed that was wrong with the installation uh, previously put on here is uh, having taken this one off and that one was the same, I take the cable off and uh, that little spring washer there should be on top of the connector because the whole point of this thing is it's a it's an anti-vibration washer and it stops the nut from coming undone um, but it's not even in contact with the nut so what you do is you should have is uh, your, your fuse there and then you have your battery connector then your little washer um, little spring washer and then your nut on top and that's just all nicely firmed up it doesn't have to be screwed down super super hard uh, another thing that's worth mentioning is whilst I'm doing this work I have left the negative terminal off um, because a couple of times with the spanner it's really easy to um, touch the uh, negative bus bar so if that is disconnected then you've removed the risk of uh, having some big sparks and very hot spanners. So I've just drilled some little holes I couldn't get my big drill in there so I've used my little uh, little one which also has a right angle thing so I can get in there and whiz out those holes then chuck the switch back in hopefully find those holes another thing i'm not sure if you can see that i've done yeah you can just about um because i have multiple leads going on to different uh terminals on the battery sometimes just hold things together I just use a little cable tie or a little bit of string would work as well. Uh, I was being lazy so I use a cable tie and then when you chuck the battery back in you haven't got to worry about making sure you've got everything connected back up as it should be. So um, you shouldn't have too much connected directly to your battery anyway, it's bad practice but these are the cables in between the batteries so that's from one of the other cables, that's one of the other batteries, that goes to another battery uh, and this is one of the solar or possibly wind input, so I'd have to go and check the label. Um, that goes to a fuse um, just out of shot. It's lined up. Take that off. Mm, see, got it in the wrong place. So I need to unscrew that. Put it in the wrong hole. Okay, so let's go into that one.
there. Right, so all that's back on there, all that can go back on there. Just do it loosely for a minute because I've still got some fiddling around to do. Next up, I can make up a new cable here. I didn't want to do that until it was all ready, but um, I mean, it does look like it's had a bit of wet in there. Um, you see, that's part of the problem. Someone's used, again, the wrong size crimp. And they've not put any heat shrink on it. And so water has got into that connection. So, you know, that could be part of the problem. Well, let's chop that off and make a new one. Easily fixed. There we go, make a new one of these up. So this is all nearly back together. I just thought as I'm sticking the battery connections back on, just give them a quick clean. Got a little dab of Vaseline, just chuck that on there, a bit on all the bits. And uh, that screws in there. This one, although these connections are a bit cleaner because most of them are new cables that I've put in. There's a mixture of new and old on this boat. I can't say that I'm super proud of how tidy this cabling is. Because right, well, I've just repaired the um, lug that I, uh, the crimp that I had broken uh, or cut through by accident. So now I can just finish off cleaning up these connections. I'm just cradling these because I don't want to accidentally touch them against the negative bus bar that's here. That's the only problem with having to cram so much into such a little place. There's a few little cracks and pops happening. It's just because that's the, um, what you call it, capacitors charging up because it's been disconnected. So I'll stick that on there, that one on there, that one on there, I'll sandwich that in there somewhere. More connections than ideal really, but. Needs must. I can hear things beeping as they've come back alive. Now, ideally, one would have covers over these as well, but I don't have any. So it's a case of do as I say, not as I do. And let's snug those up. Done up, that's done up. Just check the other connections. That's tight. That's tight. So we've got new battery terminals. We've got new cable going up to there. Those connections are all good. That fuse is fine. New cable coming out. Well, that new cable ends up going on to my new switch. I've done all the connections up. Uh, there's the other side of the switch. I've cleaned all those connections up. Everything's all good there. That also had a bit of corrosion on it. That was for the domestic bank. So I've cleaned that up and that's all good. Everything is reconnected. Everything is powered back up. All I need to do is start by switching the services back on and the lights are back on on the panel. Next, engine battery is on. So 
I'm going to go and spin the engine over and see how it goes. Check she's out again. It's a beautiful sunny day out here. Ignition on. Just give it a couple of seconds of heat. And then. Beautiful. That's a success. Well, there we go, job done. Engine started really easily. Well, I noticed previously when I was able to start it on the engine start battery, it was turning over much more slowly than uh, it should do, really. So I think there must be some resistance in that switch because uh, it just started straight off on the button there. One thing I didn't mention was if you are disconnecting your batteries, as much as you may not have any loads running on the boat, if like me you've got a wind generator or solar panels like that, the solar charge controller and wind charge controllers will be connected directly to the batteries. So if you suddenly disconnect them while they are charging, it's highly likely that you'll blow up your controllers. So what I did was I tied off the blades on my wind gen and I temporarily disconnected my solar panels from the charge controllers so that when the charge controllers were disconnected from the batteries, they didn't suddenly go pop. So definitely worth thinking about what is connected to your batteries other than loads, there's also charging stuff going on there. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's been a little bit of boat fixing here on the Tamar. I'm hopefully now gonna go and get a bit of sailing in now that I'm confident the engine will start. If you have liked this video, press the subscribe button. It will notify you of other videos as they get posted. And uh, if you give me a like down the bottom, that's really appreciated as well. Thanks very much. See you next time.